Gold speculation reaches a record low. Could this be the perfect time to start acquiring gold assets? Amir Nani, top resource entrepreneur and recipient of Casey's 10 Bagger Club, thinks so. In an environment where nearly 70% of TSX Venture mining companies have a market cap of less than $5 million, Amir's new gold company, Brazil Resources, just raised $6.4 million through an oversubscribed private placement, with the biggest buyers being management, Doug Casey of Casey Capital Strategies, and legendary investor Rick Rule. BRI also just completed the acquisition of Brazilian Gold Corp, which will more than double their in-ground gold minerals. Brazil Resources seizing the opportunity. Uh, greetings and thank you for joining us at futuremoneytrends.com. I'm here with a good friend, Bill Murphy of La Metropole Cafe. He is also part of the organization GATA, GATA.org, uh, which is a civil rights organization that has sued the Fed and won. Uh, is fighting the big bullion banks and, and trying to expose the Treasury Department, Federal Reserve, and this big collusion in the manipulation of the gold price and other precious metals as well, specifically silver. Uh, Bill and Gata have met with the former Speaker of the House, Lawrence Lindsay, Ron Paul, and like I've said, they've they've actually got uh, a lawsuit against the Fed that they, they won. Bill, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, great to be here, Dan. Good to hear from you. Bill, in the last year, uh, gold manipulation has really gone mainstream. I mean, we've seen articles in the Financial Times, Bloomberg, and others. And in, in fact, as recently as Monday, uh, we had an article about individual citizens, pension funds, and hedge fund managers suing the big bullion banks. And it seems that this thing is unraveling. Uh, what's your What's your thoughts? Uh, yeah. Uh it's it begun, and I guess that's the, the key word, it's just beginning, because still the, 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 the major part of the manipulation with what we call the gold cartel, the bullion banks and the government, the Bank for International Settlements, to set the Fed and the Treasury, you know, it, it's about the manipulation of the, uh, the gold and silver markets on a big picture basis all over the place, and what it represents, and what, what's behind it, what's it going to mean. And while there's talk about, it's, it's common nowadays to hear about uh, lawsuits against market manipulations and complaints against the London fix. Uh, it, the, the, the real biggie, the big issue about what's really going on with our government involved, nobody will touch it with a 10-foot pole. It's unbelievable after all this time, and we're so close, but no cigars, they say. Bill, my concern with gold manipulation is that, like other whistleblowers like Snowden, where he put his whole life on the line, and exposed some really interesting things about what the NSA was doing, kind of confirmed a lot of suspicions for a lot of people. And and then nothing happened, no arrests, no government change. Basically, the citizens don't care. And that's kind of my concern with gold. Like here, it's all being kind of exposed that, yeah, they're clearly manipulating the gold price. And just no one seems to care. Uh, do, you, do you have the same feelings? Well, they've been getting away with these what I call financial market terrorist attacks, these flash crash attacks, keep occurring. We just had one a couple of days ago when, you know, gold was hit with something like 40 tons of gold in minutes. I mean, you only have seven tons of, of gold mined in a day uh, all over the world. So, I mean, it's ludicrous that it's so obvious what's happening. It's very blatant. They don't care. There's no rule of law. The CFTC is impotent. Uh, it's got to, as always said now for 15 years, we're taking on the richest, most powerful people in the world, and they rule. So they do whatever they want, and yes, I don't think it's ever going to get anywhere until, and this is a big until, the markets blow up, and that's coming. So it's not like, oh, this is a law causing cause in any way. It's just going to take the physical markets to blow up, probably certain defaults, or maybe it'll lead eventually to... to uh, some really big economic issues in the United States, and then when everybody's totally ticked off and the markets are flying, then it'll be okay to go there because the public will demand answers. You know, Bill, I've always wondered why somebody like a Sprott, who recently said that he was considering suing the banks himself uh, in regards to gold and silver manipulation, why doesn't a, someone like Sprott, where these markets are so tight, why doesn't he throw you know, 50 to 100 million or, or partner up with a few people and throw a few hundred million at it and bust this thing wide open like a pinata, specifically in the silver market where the physical market is really tight. I think it's the leftover from what happened to Bunker Hunt uh, and the Hunt Brothers, what happened way back when, when uh, and they weren't doing anything, they were just buying up the market. 
and the whole system went against them. Uh, and I can and, and uh, it's it's left a, a very bad taste about going after uh, the civil market. Uh, it's uh, you're, I ask the same thing, and you're correct, but it's 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 a, a bit scary. I can tell you a story I know for a fact back when the fibro days uh, involved in the silver market, and uh, I think back then I think Bunker, I mean. Um, uh, the Berks- Berkshire Hathaway. My, my mind's gone a little bit slow here. Uh, Warren Buffett was uh, running the show there, and uh, Fibro through their broker Jimmy DiPiazza, another fella, had the market cornered. And it was a wild story because they bought really zillions worth of options at five and a quarter, and then one month the market went out that day at five dollars, and all the people that had written all the calls were all laughing because they made all this money. And fiber didn't get anywhere. And fiber decided to take delivery with the price twenty five cents below the market. There five twenty five calls, and it set off a complete panic in the silver market. The price started to go nuts, and the government stepped in and said, "Listen, you know, Warren Buffett, you can do whatever you want in your operation, but you're going to have the Fed down your throat, audited in every way imaginable for the next ten years if you don't get out of the silver market." Wow. Well. I guess the gold manipulation, uh, where it's most clear is and obvious, is the gold fix. Uh, and I want to get into this Bloomberg article that came out in February that I'm sure you're very familiar with. But before we do, uh, if you could just talk to people, what is the gold fix? What does it do? Well, simplistically, uh, it was AM fix and a PM fix in London, in which the price is set for the day uh, for physical deals done all over the world. And the, the PM fix is the real important one. That's where 85 or 90% of all the deals that are contracted all over the world, that's the price you get if you're going to sell silver that day, and that's the price you'll have to pay to buy it. So it's a big deal in terms of how physical markets uh, are priced. And no matter what people say a lot of times in our world about the paper market and physical market, and and at the end of the day, the key is what the PM fixes in terms of deals. And... In the end of the day, you know, that rules, and the paper market influences the pricing for sure and what they're doing in the derivatives contracts. And, and, and that's a very important aspect of the whole market. But at the end of the day, you know, if you're going to sell your gold, you take what you can get at the PM fix. Yeah, you guys have been around since 1999 as, a, as an organization uh, of GATA, correct? Yep. Okay, so this this Bloomberg article noted that the after the PM gold fix, overwhelmingly the price spiked down, and in, and even in 2010 it went down 92 percent of the time. But this really started in 04, and I wanted to ask you, you know, you guys watch this stuff on a daily basis. Why why since 2004? Why why not you know why 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 not since 2008 for example? And I guess the the question is is you know is it because the bull market was kind of getting underway and 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 maybe possibly out of control? Well, that's a good question, Dan, and I, I'm not sure I can do that justice. But what I can do justice, I've been writing about the anomalies and the trading curiosities in the gold market all this time. And and you mentioned after the PM fix, I've been calling that Plan B since 2004, been noting it day after day and time and time again. And there's Plan A, when, and that's normally when they, 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 the gold cartels, we call it, leaves on gold around 3 a.m. New York time when the London traders go to work. And something one of our, our stars, uh, James McShirley, knows all the time, was a speaker at our huge conference in London uh, almost three years ago now. When the gold goes up, it's, he can pencil in what the price is going to stop at or end up at the, the end of the next day, meaning 1%. That's what they allow it to do. And he, he just noted this time and time and time again. It keeps happening, and again, nobody says anything. It's, and so now all of a sudden, after all these years, somebody's finally noticed what we've been talking about since 2004. Yeah, it, it is amazing that it's, it's mainstream with, with Bloomberg and the Financial Times and, of course, sites like Zero Hedge covering it. So what are you and uh, Chris Powell up to with uh, GADA these days? Well, I'm going to be speaking in Dallas in uh, 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 three weeks. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, uh, Chris just got back from Hong Kong in which he gave a presentation over there. And actually, we got a pretty quiet summer so far. I'm going to be speaking in New Orleans this fall. 
uh, unfortunately, the, the Cambridge House people have scheduled a bunch of things with other conferences, and we've been asked to speak at those other conferences first, so can't go there. But uh, we're ready to move at any time, and you, you never know when things can pop up out of nowhere that we can go and address. So how was the reception for uh, Chris Palinasia? Well, it's interesting. You know, uh, uh, Bernie Lowe has been great to us. He used to be on Bloomberg and then was on, is on CNBC and in Asia right now, and uh, he's been so uh, great to God over these years, and Chris got over there this time, and, uh, you know, God bless Bernie, but his editors, I don't think, uh, would let him, uh, in fact, I know this for a fact, they wouldn't let Chris go on the show. Wow. And it, 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 is, it is, with all this manipulation talk you're, you mentioned, which is true and valid and growing, the biggest, the big picture deals, as I mentioned earlier, I know this for a fact, that editors will not allow reporters to mention Gada or to get into our subjects, and the key word over and over again is because it is, quote, sensitive. Well, what the heck does that mean? It's sensitive. You mean we're so right? It's that big a deal? And the answer is yes. Now, Bill, do you guys notice, uh, like, during a financial crisis or, or a government cri- crisis, like this thing that recently happened in Ukraine, do you notice an increase in the activity of the manipulation of the gold price during major events like this? Because I'm always shocked, you know, like, you know, this thing with Ukraine, for example, the Dow's up 100, gold's down 20 bucks. It's like, wow, that's kind of the opposite of what I thought would happen. I have never once in 15 years seen gold keep its gains on an international crisis of any kind. Never one time. And the reason, again, is simple. They don't want to see gold being the safe haven place to go and reflect on everything else. So that's when the kind of, the sort of times when they go out of their way to, to hit the gold price. And they rally for a bit because the demand overwhelms them short term. And then they contain it at some point and then they attack again. And whether it's hours, days, or a week or so, the gains are always taken back. There hasn't been one exception in all the years, I've been at the police since 1999. Yeah, it's it seems like they've knocked it down so low now that it's a very safe investment, especially with it being below the cost of uh, to mine it. Um, how how are the uh, the miners doing? Do you talk to any of these guys? Well, I mean, it's and you're right. In many cases, it's uh, the, the cost is below production. Uh, it's very hard to raise financing. Uh, the industry is in a depression. Uh, people are going out of work. People are getting fired. Uh, it's it's uh, it's a very uh, depressing time right now because of what this gold cartel has done. It's affecting people, and that's just what the gold cartel wants that people to do: give up and quit. And it's it's the dichotomy with the Dow keep going up, uh, keeps going up, and 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 the shares get hit. I mean, heck, I mean, even the big ones, uh, uh, Newmont and Barrick, are barely what they were when they were when the price of gold was less than three hundred. I, I mean, know, this I, is astounding. And those are the those are the, the, the you know the high cap stocks. The little ones, many of them have gone into oblivion. Yeah, Marin Katusa was telling me the other day in uh, Vancouver the uh, vacancies for these commercial properties are way up. What are you talking about there? I missed that, Dan. Well, well what, uh, Marin Katusa with Casey Research has an office in Vancouver, and he he was talking about a letter he had received from his landlord. So uh, basically it was to move him or give him a better opportunity uh, in another office space. And uh, anyway, Marin, upon looking into it, had found out that the commercial available office space in Vancouver was was literally up like a hundred percent, where uh, you'd seen a huge drop in in tenants. Oh, well, it's interesting. And on the same note, you know, I've always been a fan of the Cambridge House people that run these conferences all over the place. And and uh, uh, if you go and check out their their Vancouver schedule, half of it's high tech. They're going from a gold resource conference to a, a mix. They got one mode area or something. It's high tech. Uh, uh, people and and uh, uh, and the other half is gold and you know oil and silver. Well, yeah. that's astounding because it was a hundred percent natural resources just a year ago. Yeah, if you recall, the last time we saw each other was in uh, San Francisco at the Minerals Mines and Minerals Show, and you know the year prior they had over two hundred booths. This time they only had uh, sixty booths, 
And my thoughts on gold especially is that, you know, number one, these are much safer investments than they were two years ago, obviously, because of the price decline. But with gold, you've got like a 20% downside risk and a three to 400% upside potential. It, it seems like it's a, it's a fa- fairly safe investment at this point. Yeah, it's a spe- uh, that's very true, Dan. And uh, for your listeners, it's especially true in silver, which is, as I keep commenting on, is a heavy affecting market this past month. I think, as, as I've ever seen, it's actually been this way for years, but it gets worse and worse. And I don't know what it's going to take to flush it out. But the downside is, uh, is a dollar or two in silver, uh, and um, I don't know, maybe three. And the upside is, you know, fifty to one hundred and fifty dollars. So the risk reward here. Is is getting to the point uh, where it's going off the charts. Now we may have a, a flush out coming, and that's the way it's acting. But when this is done, at some point here, it's going to go bonkers, and gold's going to go with it. Yeah. Now at this point, uh, currency event or not, buying below the cost of the uh, mining cost to produce it is uh, is a really good deal. And I've never been a ratio guy uh, because the price is manipulated. However, I know that. It's up to sixty-six to one now for for the silver to gold ratio. Do you follow that at all? Yeah, and that's where I mean I'm a big Eric Spot fan, as many people know, and uh, he's looking for the silver price to go nuts when this thing gets going, and he's looking for the gold silver ratio to get somewhere back to where it's it's, it's historic norm. Bill Murphy of Gata and La Metropole Cafe. If you want to learn more about gold and get daily updates, you can subscribe to La Metropole Cafe, and I believe there's still a free trial offer, right, uh, Bill? Yeah, two-week free trial, see if, if it's uh, you know, of use to people. And then you can also subscribe to GATA, which is free, GATA.org, and um, you'll get about two to three dispatches a day. Uh, to see Bill, you can see him in Dallas at the Stansbury event on May 31st. I think I'm going to try to make it there to see Bill. And uh, it's a Stansbury event, so I'm sure it'll be first class as well. Uh, Bill, what do, you, uh, what do you plan on talking about at the uh, Dallas event? No, they've asked me before I'm going to speak about it. I think they're nervous. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if I've got time to put it together here. And I'm, the basic thing I'm going to try to cover is, is uh, why this is such an important issue for people that are there. And then also what you've touched on, that the because of what why it's important to know what they're doing, because here's what the prices of gold and silver are going to do. And uh, as you've already talked about, the, 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 the time to be buying in it is now – and the risk reward setup is extraordinary, and it's liable to kick in out of nowhere. So I'm just going to try to lay out some three or four points to, for the uh, attendees to keep in mind, because it's hard to put 15 years' worth of uh, knowledge on this subject into a, one presentation. You know, Bill, uh, I think talking to you has definitely made me want to go over there uh, and uh, and support you. And I think you're going to have a very friendly audience. Uh, you know, a lot of people came to Stansbury from the End of America video. So uh, I think I'm going to end up packing up the Yukon and uh, heading over there with the whole family. Well, I'll tell you what, if you please let me know if you're coming. I'd love to see you. Oh, yeah, Bill, my wife uh, made it very clear to me before I started this interview that she wanted to make sure uh, uh, I said hello to you for her. Uh, and congrats on your new kid. All right, Bill. Thanks very much. You have a good one. Hope you see you there. Take care.